Excited to be joined now on Mass and All Access by Brad Selick, the Director of Draft Operations for the Baltimore Orioles. Brad, thank you so much for joining me during a very busy, hectic week for you here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you're picking at number 17 this year rather than the top five that we've seen from you guys over the last few seasons. Can you talk about some of the challenges that come with drafting at this spot rather than a little bit earlier in the draft? Yeah, absolutely. Clearly, we're not picking up at the top, which in my opinion is a great thing. We're right. all really excited about that. So uh, the flip side of that is we have more names to cover, more ground to cover. You know, typically when you're picking at the top of the draft, whether it's two, five, one, you're only looking potentially at five to eight guys. Now, we probably have around 20 to 21 guys we're really zeroing in on leading up here to the draft in a few days. Now, I know last year you guys said that, you know, there was that group of five kind of day of, and then you whittled it down from there. Is it going to be a group of 20 or so when the draft rolls along on Sunday, or are you going to have that whittled down a little bit more as this week rolls along? We should have it whittled down to our top 17, and then obviously we'll see kind of what happens ahead of us, and hopefully, you know, we'll, the guy that we get um, is as far up on our list as possible. Do you feel any less pressure drafting at 17 versus drafting at number one, or is it kind of the same animal? No, you know what, I think it's kind of the same animal. I think the best way for me to describe it is as long as you stick to your process, feel confident in what you're doing week in, week out, and stick to the process and continue to work hard at it, good things hopefully will come of it. But a lot of this is actually outside of our control. We don't have any idea. We don't have a crystal ball, but so far so good. We're going to hopefully continue down the path we have the last few drafts. And we always hear over the last few years here about maximizing the draft as a whole, mm -hmm. not just the first round pick. Whether it's an overslot or an underslot guy, do you have any different philosophies drafting at number 17, overslot, underslot, versus the top five? Or is it kind of the same philosophy of making sure that you're maximizing every pick in the draft? Yeah, I think the best way for me to describe it is, first and foremost, we want the best guy. We want the best guy that, in terms of a fit for our organization, between the lines, as far as the mental makeup is concerned. The secondary aspect of that is, okay, we got the best fit for our organization. And that's kind of where the money comes into play. Now, if we are able to save a little bit of money, that's great. We'll look to kind of maximize that. But as you mentioned, we're always looking to maximize our bonus pool, trying to get the biggest returns in terms of, you know, uh, the draft that's considered, whether it's the third, fourth, fifth round. And we've had a lot of success, success on that front. Uh, looking back at the past few drafts, Kobe Mayo was a fourth round selection. We, we employed that strategy. But first and foremost, we're always going to look to get the best player, best fit for our organization. Now, when you say best fit for the organization, what are some different things that go into that calculation? Well, first and foremost, they have to look the part. They have to be able to compete out here against the gauntlet that is the American League East and, you know, the rest of Major League Baseball. Second part of that is we want guys that are kind of wired correctly. And what I mean by that is guys that just can't stand or stomach losing that are going to be driven and focused to do whatever it takes to win. And I think so far we've got a lot of those guys out there um, right now here with the Major League Club. Um, and then obviously we want guys that are going to be good teammates, good clubhouse guys that are going to push and pull and you know, get the most and best out of each, of one, each and every one of their teammates every day. Now getting into this draft class specifically, can you talk about some of the strengths of the class that you're seeing this year? Absolutely. I think the biggest thing with this draft class is uh, the caliber of college starting pitching in the first round, or projected first round, I should say. A lot of fans saw those guys at Omaha, Rhett Louder, Paul Skeens, Hunter Waldrip, Chase Dollander are some names. Ty Floyd is another one. Um, and I also think that there's also some quality college hitters in this class as well that have had some very good years, or good years, I should say, as a whole. And then the high school crop is also very promising. There's a lot of infielders, infield uh, high school prospects that we have scouted over the last year and change. And overall, it's a very deep class. So uh, very excited about the overall talent level here to pick from. Now you started that answer with pitching, which might be kind of surprising given how the draft has gone for you guys the last few years. Do you think this draft could be a little bit different when you guys are evaluating pitchers? Do you think there's some more talent that you guys are maybe interested in in the first round where in past years that wasn't the case? Sure, I think we're always gonna keep an open mind when it comes to our pick. The, uh, the reason I started with the pitching class is I think in years past, it hasn't been as deep at the front of the class, whereas this class, those guys have been, you know, consistent college starters, you know, their entire careers um, at their respective schools. But to go back to your original question, yeah, we're always going to keep an open mind, and that's how we've kind of played it year in, year out here. And I think fans looking at this draft from an outside perspective might 
look at maybe the top 10 in the Orioles' current top 30 and say, hey, there could be some more pitchers in there. Are you looking at your current farm system when you are making a selection in the first round in terms of, okay, what positions do we need? Where could we look? Or is it just kind of best player available and we'll figure out where they need to go as they get down the line? You know, a couple of years ago, I would definitely just say, yeah, it's going to be the best player available regardless of position. I will say that we still look to achieve that. That's still the overall focus and strategy. However, I think a big... Um, component uh, as far as this year and preparing is we're looking for guys that are versatile that might be able to play a second or third position especially with how our major league roster is composed I mean we all it's a good problem to have we have a lot of guys that are up here now that uh, can play a lot of positions and we have some guys in AAA that are close to knocking on the door so we still want the best player available regardless of position but now I think we are being mindful of the ability for some of these guys to move and play other positions, whereas in years past that maybe wasn't as strong of a focal point for us. And has the winning this year changed your outlook on the draft at all in terms of maybe, hey, we've got a window here for maybe the next few seasons, whatever it may be. Let's look at a college arm or an established college bat who might be able to get here a little bit quicker. Does that change the calculus at all? Not for me, no. I think bottom line is I just want to continue to add high quality talent throughout the organization in every single round. Um, obviously, if there is an opportunity to add a guy that we think might be able to fast track and get up to the big league club and help sooner than or later, that's going to weigh heavily on our minds. But I kind of like to say every year, regardless of the situation, what's going on up here, our process and our focus stays the same as far as getting as much talent as possible. Now, there is a flip side of that question I asked you about the pitchers as well, whereas you know the middle infielders in the organization, a little bit crowded. But in this draft, in kind of the 10 to 20 range here, when you look at mock drafts and things like that, a lot of really good high school infielders. Do you worry about things getting too crowded? Or again, is it just if the player fits, the player fits? I think if the player fits, the player fits. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that. That's, uh, that's right. Mike Elias' job to worry about that. So, But um, to your point best player available regardless position and these type of things typically do end up working out in some capacity as far as you know roster log jams and so on and finally brad we've had three number one prospects in the last few years we just saw colton Kowser get the promotion at the big leagues how important is kind of the confidence level for you guys going into the draft knowing how successful you've been in the past yeah um i would say it's obviously great that things have worked out the way they have but at the same time you know, we don't want to get complacent in terms of success that we've had. We know that every year it's going to be a dogfight in the American League East, and we can't afford to, I don't want to say take a year off, but be complacent. We know that we have to continue this process. We have to continue doing well, and that's ultimately the goal, regardless of if we're picking 1, 10, 17, hopefully, you know, 30 uh, when all is said and done. So it's very gratifying. It's very exciting. I'm glad that these guys are not only uh, coming up here and, and you know, are here and have a presence in the clubhouse, but also helping perform and help the team win. But uh, we want to keep that going. We don't want the uh, we don't want the we don't want to have a drought, so to speak. We want to keep that going. Well, given the success of the draft the last few years, you guys have set yourself up for a lot of success in the AL East moving forward. Director of Draft Operations for the Orioles, Brad Selick. Thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.